Oh, good morning. Good morning. Can everyone hear me? I'm thinking that you can. This is Joan of Angels. We are getting close to Christmas and just about a week and a half ago, Neil and I were having a chat about how can we just give back to the community with the Christmas spirit, the holiday spirit, and talk about our personal, oh, look at that, the light just started to shine in my home. Talk about our personal ascension. I'm Joan of the Angels. I'm really a channel, a medium for divine beings. They're called the earth messengers. They're being sent by the divine to help and assist humanity. And I just started painting three years ago when I got messages to paint 33 angels in 30 days. So that's a little bit about me and I love working with Neil and Portal to Ascension. I'll tell you about my upcoming event later. But today we are going to be talking with William Henry. I'm waiting to see him come on. And I've just been in such awe since, since Neil asked me to do this interview. Primarily because I hadn't realized that, that um, let's see, he's on. Okay, good. So he's going to be coming on momentarily. But, but what I didn't realize was that, was that William Henry speaks a lot about portals and stargates and using them as ascension for us humans to go through them. And if you check out my website, angels and go through to the art, you'll see stargates and portals. I've been doing this unconsciously with this desire to get to heaven. So I'll get this thought, how can I paint going to heaven? And then I'll do these stargate stairs, portals, all sorts of things. So once I realized I was going to be interviewing William Henry, I got really excited. So with no further ado, some of you already know William Henry. Hmm. Looking for him right now. William, I think we're going to... Hi, John. There you are. Well, I hear you. Great. And we're going to see you soon. I'm really going to let Neil handle that. Can I hear you? I, I can hear you just fine. Yes. Thank you, John. Oh, perfect. There we are. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? It's probably not morning for you, but... It is morning. Well, yeah, it's 11 a.m. Okay. So, oh, I'm sitting next to one of my favorite, my, my um, Krishna. It's called like the Ascension Pathway to Heaven. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, that's beautiful. But I'm just so psyched to talk to you. Thank you. You too. And yes. thank you, everybody, for joining us. Oh, yes. And thank you to Portal to Ascension and Neil. And thank you to... to um, all of those divine beings who allowed us to have Christmas every year, <laughs> really because I feel like this is the time of year more people are willing to talk about angels and ascension and happiness and, and joy. You're right. You know, so why don't you give us a little, like, how did you dive into this? And then, and then where are you at with it now? <laughs> how did I get started in this kind of path of, Mystical yeah, what took over you? What, Pardon me? what took over you to dedicate your whole life to this? Well, um, I it's kind of a boring story. I was uh, I grew up in Detroit. I moved to Nashville, Music City. I have a interest in music. I play guitar. I'm not a, a musician musician, but I I love the instrument. I love music, and I was going to be an entertainment lawyer, and maybe work in Hollywood or Nashville or or whatever. And I was going to a small Southern Baptist college here in Nashville. I didn't have a religious background growing up, but I went to this Baptist college because they offered a, a music business education where you could get ready to go to work on Music Row. You'd have professors from all the record companies and lawyers and so forth would be were our instructors. But the catch was to get to Music Row, you had to go through the Bible Belt first. You had to you had to take Bible study classes, right. and I knew nothing about the Bible. Okay, this is 1982. I'm a 19-year-old sophomore. I have this kind of Texas marshal for a professor, Bible thumper, assigns us to review a book whose implications would impact Christianity. Write a three-page review of this book. So off I go to the local bookstore, and here's this brand new book called Holy Blood, Holy Grail. Many participants are... Pardon me? 
I have seen this book. Yeah, it was a global bestseller in 1982. Its premise was the crucifixion was a carefully scripted drama, a hoax. Jesus survived. He and Mary Magdalene were married. They had children. Their secrets are still buried maybe in a mountaintop village called Rennes-le-Chateau or that vicinity in southern France. And the traditional Christian church, the Church of Rome, has been doing everything it can for centuries to eliminate that original mystical Christianity. And boy, I was hooked from the, the very instant I got into that book. It was like it was a, there was a power pack in there somehow. And I became the Energizer Bunny. I wrote a 44-page review of that book, was asked to leave the school because, <laughs> because I believed Standing up for your beliefs. Yeah, and they said you might consider continuing your education elsewhere because we're a, this is a Baptist college, and I, I just did not belong. So that was my first, my first venture out of the box, if you will. I was out on my own, and I started reading everything I could get my hands on. And then I began uh, writing books in 1996, and almost from the very beginning, my focus has remained the same, and it originates from that first understanding or first look, if you will, back in 1982. And that is, there is this parallel version of mystical Christianity that is devoted to human transformation into angels or celestial beings. And I was locked on to that from the very beginning. All of my books, I've written 18 books now, they, they all deal with one aspect or another of how we go from our our flesh and blood bodies, our, celest our, our earthly flesh to our celestial flesh, our, our light body, our glory body, our rainbow body, diamond body, golden body, resurrection body. Every single religious and spiritual tradition on the planet has a name for this next level of mental, physical, spiritual, and emotional evolution. And the, the thing is, is that trying to find out how to do that is, is the big challenge, but that's been the through line of my life, my work, uh, ever since then, and now here we are in 2016, turning the page to 2017, and now more than ever, I have more enthusiasm for that quest than ever before. Well, you know, I picked up on that because, you know, three years ago, I got these messages to paint 33 angels, and it just came through as this whoosh and has completely overtaken my whole entire life. Well, it is my life now. So having a passion that, or having a mission that you came here to do, you came here to teach us humans, I'm sure that we can, sh I love this, that we can become angels. Yeah. And I, I don't know, I'm just so excited because when I start a painting, I go, how can I get closer to heaven? How yeah. can I find my way home? Right. And that's what this painting is about. So yeah. I, is it easier to get there through Christmas? Like how, how does this relate to us right now? Well, and first of all, let me just say that I'm, I'm not sure I came here to teach anybody how to do this. I'm as much a student as anybody else. I'm but just you trying teach to teach as possible. You teach Pardon? as possible. I, I teach as you, possible. You're right. You teach that the ancients did it. Yes. You yes. actually yes. even, I, I just really want to acknowledge this. You share that there's yes. technology to do that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Technology in ancient art, in ancient museums, in ancient and even new technology in my art. So right. I would like to share that you did come to reveal this. It okay. took you over at a very young age. It wasn't a logical decision. <laughs> and it used a different brain than being an attorney. So You're please, right. Well, we thank you for that. I want to thank you. That my guides are telling me to just to get you to really get, say thank you. I'd like okay. we thank you. Well, oh, thank you. No, thank you. I mean, it's been a, an honor and a pleasure to be able to share what I've, I've learned and to, to connect with as many people as I have. It's truly, truly wonderful. So Christmas. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> very special opportunity, isn't it? Because it's one time a year where we're thinking peace, joy, goodwill towards our, our fellow human beings. There, there is a certain vibe about it, whether you accept the, the Christian story or not, it does not matter because it's a, it's a real group think opportunity. People all over the world, and perhaps even in other worlds, celebrate this time of year as a very special time. The energetics. I, yeah, and, and I enlarge that energetically to other star systems because what I've come to understand about the whole Christ story is that, one, it's, it's not native to Earth. 
that when the, the first Christians were bringing forth the, the divine Christ child and preparing Mary as the vessel, the Theotokos, as they call her, the divine vessel to hold this, this higher frequency being, they were part of a long tradition of human initiates and also celestial beings, angels, who were working cooperatively to infuse the human, the human line, our genome, our consciousness, with a new way of being, a, a new version of humanity that would have expanded spiritual capabilities, that would have the ability to transform the earth into a new earth, a planet of light, love, and righteousness. This is the, this is the goal. And, and Christmas, the birth of this divine child, marks the moment when all of humanity is awakened or infused with this Christ consciousness, this Christ light that came from elsewhere. And it was mission accomplished as far as the Essenes were concerned. And they were the, the Jewish mystics, the Jewish and Buddhist mystics who were collaborating with many of the initiates of the ancient world from Iran, Iraq, Egypt, and elsewhere to bring about this infusion of new consciousness, of new life, to advance the human race. And so Christmas celebrates the arrival of that divine light being Christ, the, the child. Christ is born, born in glory. And his life mission then is all about showing us the way to tap into this Christ consciousness, this mystical consciousness, and how to live as Christ-like beings. We have a kind of an interesting question um, so from Lena, who wants to know that the calendar, how about the fact that the calendar was adjusted, this two-week shift, but I don't think that it would matter, right? You're That's okay, it doesn't matter. No, we all collectively agree that this is the time of year when we're going to celebrate this birth, and that's what's, what's important. It seems to me that from my work with the angelics, when I started painting and I put them on the wall, I discovered I had created a, a, a portal, an angel loft. I lived in a penthouse. It was an angel loft. And they, they told me that because the vibrations were high, we could connect. So what you're really sharing, I'm hearing, is that this portal around December 21st, the whole um, opening, uh, there's a big portal of energy, really, that changes the vibration of Earth mm -hmm. and shifts it higher so that we could actually make some transitions or they can connect more with us. Exactly. And when you look at the, the, the meme group, if you will, around the idea of Christmas, it's again, hope, peace, joy, love, merriment, miracles. It's a, it's a time when people are praying together. It doesn't matter who or what you're praying to. It's just the intention that we're all putting forward that, hey, we, we have made it through another year. The light is returning. And yes, it does have an astronomical component as well as an astrological component. But equally importantly, it has a spiritual component within our own inner universe. And that's what uh, everybody loves, in my opinion, about Christmas. It is celebrating the advent or arrival of this divine light being, but it's also welcoming the light within ourselves. The nativity, the birth of the child, is coming forth from within every one of us. It's not just a single birth that uh, so many focus on. It's really a birth of something coming from within all of us. Does this apply also? It's not just the Christ consciousness then. Would it, what it, I mean, if I was a Buddhist or a, you know, a Muslim, would I still have the same energetics? Absolutely, absolutely, because especially when you track the, the, the history of the origins of the Essenes, this mystical sect out of which the Christ child emerged and who were his teachers, they were Jew books. They were Jewish Buddhists, and they were furthermore Zoroastrians as well. So we can talk about this story from just about any angle you wish, the Hindu angle, the Buddhist, the Zoroastrian, the, the religions that predate Christianity, even uh, the ancient Egyptian tradition would be comfortable with this story because what we've done is change the names. We're updating the story, but the archetypal motif remains the same, the return of the light 
to show us the way to the light. So that we can do ascension, we can step in and return as angels, meaning that maybe all of us humans or many of us humans actually have the angelic body or come from that realm. What do you think about that then? Yeah, well, that is the, the belief of the Essenes is that the light body isn't something we're going to acquire. It's something we already are. It is our true divine essence that's covered over. It's mucked up by negative thinking, uh, false perceptions. Does everyone have this? Pardon me? Does everyone have this potential or is yes. it a, a specific group that maybe have, or, well, or those of us who've worked our way up or? Yeah, the question is, does everybody have a soul? Oh, okay. Because if you have a soul, you can manifest the light body by definition because it's, it's at the core of who you are. And this thinking, this belief system, we all are this divine spark, the soul, that manifests our physical flesh and blood body to work out karma, to experience earth life, and to act as agents of love and light for our creator, to bring peace to this world. And then once we're through with that, then we have the ability to drop these earthly clothes and return to our original celestial garments, our garments of light, the, the light body. Wow. Well, first of all, for someone who never read the Bible until you got this awakening, it's quite interesting, your perspective. And what about people who claim, because I feel and see angels, do they come through in your teachings? Is that, what does that have to do with our light body? Is there something we can do to bring that forward for us? Yeah, I am a, an aficionado, if you will, historian of, of <laughs> sacred, sacred art. And one of the things I learned about it, I, I've always loved sacred art. I've always had an attraction to it. Uh, going back to, to the very beginning of, of my, my research quest, I just always was collecting and locked on to sacred art. And then, I don't know, it must have been five, six years ago or so, maybe more, I learned that according to the initiates, sacred art is a portal in and of itself. As gurus, a Christ, a Buddha, a Padmasambhava, uh, you name it, name a guru, they have the ability to transmit their divine or holy vibration through a painting. It's true. And so they're present with us. As you are creating these beautiful works of art that surround you, you're actually creating sacred mirrors or portals or gateways, two-way methods of communication where these divine beings can transmit their holy vibration through the medium of the sacred art, through the paint, through the canvas, through your intention, and then alter our divine blueprint. And this is neuroscience. This isn't me speculating and saying, oh, I wish this were true. It'd be so cool. It is true. It's scientifically proven fact that art has this effect on us. So, I love this. I'm going to quote you. If I can, like Trisha McCannon walked in my house. I know you know her. Mm -hmm. And she said, Joni, she was here for one second. She said, Joni, she calls me Joni. Do you know that Krishna is here? He's like this far away. Yeah. And, and when people come in here, they, they sit down in front of a painting and the painting starts talking to them or they take it home and there's a real angel or a yes. real divine being. And that's what... And I feel that it lifts up our frequency so we can continue to connect. With it the, does. Uh, and and, uh, and we now know. And think how powerful this is, Joan. Joni. <laughs> think <laughs> how powerful it is to now have the science behind it where we now know the neuroscience of, of this experience, of what it's doing to our neocortex and how it's awakening us. And then you combine that with the spiritual beliefs about it. The Buddhists call it ekagrata one pointed focus on sacred images and their 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 idea is this this is their one of their practices if you want to be like the buddha hold the image of the buddha in your hand and one pointedly focus or concentrate on that image and it will overlay or superimpose that energy upon your blueprint or energy field it's beautiful and so when people ask me what's your spiritual practice do you breathe do you take ayahuasca do you meditate what do you do? I tell them, I stare at images all day. 
and they're mirrors. And I understand that. Our soul becomes what it beholds. Right. It's simple. I just did a meditation uh, that I posted on my YouTube. On I just looked into one of my paintings' eyes, Archangel Michael, and I went into a trance that I brought through for six minutes because that's how powerful. Um, I, I this is crazy. Can you see me? I see myself above your your pedestal with my art. Do you see that? I almost look angelic here. Or the way it's showing up to me, I see my head on top of, of, of a sculpture that must be angelic wings under your mantle. Well, you can't see it, but I can. No. <laughs> uh, I, I want to ask you a few other questions, sure. uh, a little bit more. So I know you, you're on Ancient Aliens, you're the yes. star, although your hair is not, you know, all puffed out with your, <laughs> right. That's um, not me. <laughs> I see that you're, you're really yourself. But, but with Ancient Aliens, the show that I love, like how there's always been confusion, even I'm confused, between angels and extraterrestrials. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people online have that same confusion. Yeah. Can you address that a bit? Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's a little bit of muddy waters, but uh, in my opinion, I mean, you have, two, you have two schools of thought when you're approaching these ancient stories, especially of celestial beings, extraterrestrials in winged rings, craft, okay? You can look at that and you can say, flying saucer. The gods are advanced beings with technology about 100 years in advance of where we're at today. 100 years from now, we'll have warp craft. 100 years from now, we will probably be able to open wormholes. 100 years from now, will be doing all kinds of the miraculous genetics things that they talked about extraterrestrials doing in the ancient world. We're, we're, we're right there. So these beings you're going to decide are either simply advanced humans, flesh and blood beings, in hardware flying saucers like a flying Toyota, who are going through the cosmos and visiting planets for whatever reason. Or you're going to take a look at that and go, well, wait a minute. Where's the spiritual component here? They're, they're described as gods, but they're also angels. Are the angels who are described as in eternal light bodies the same as these guys flying around in flying saucers? And the answer is no, they are not the same beings. There are various levels of beings that inhabit our, our cosmos. Even the Apostle Paul talks about that, that there's many different kinds of beings that inhabit God's, the halls of God's mansions. And he, he's trying to prepare us for that, that you, you might see guys in a flying Toyota, but you're probably also going to see celestial beings that are beings of light, that don't need craft at all, that are fully conscious beings. And so to me, there's a, a real distinction and my preference is to follow the guys that have the advanced consciousness and to say, okay, I believe there's a real spiritual component here, and I want to follow that path as opposed to just saying, oh, these guys are just big boys and girls with big toys. Yeah, I, that makes a lot of sense to me. And m part of my own exploration with it was also that some of these extraterrestrials come interdimensionally also. Mm -hmm. So there's like, oh my God, like this, this space is just filled with beings. And, and that was, was, yeah. was a big eye opener. And by the way, I did not think you were Giorgio with all that <laughs> hair. I just happened to think it was beautiful. You have beautiful hair and you're presenting yourself as yourself. It was just a tease. Yeah, so, thanks. Okay. <laughs> Nothing to do with anything, but I want to clear that up. You know, I appreciate Giorgio and his hair a lot. You know, I love this story. I was, my wife Claire and I were coming home from uh, England one time. We we're flying through Chicago, and the guy's looking at my passport, and he's like, uh, you, you go to Egypt a lot. It's like, mm-hmm. And he goes, what for? You know, starting to hassle me. Why are you going to Egypt so much? You know, 17 times. It's ridiculous. What are you, some kind of terrorist or something? You know, that's because of his attitude. And right. I'm like, no, I, 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 uh, I do some TV work. And he said, oh, yeah, what do you do? I said, well, I'm on the History Channel show, Ancient Aliens. <laughs> and he's like, is that the one with, about the guy with the hair? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, get out of here. <laughs> That's so funny. That's so funny. <laughs> but, but I had a weird experience 
at the border from Tijuana because I go down the dentist there. I come back and they had a whole new border for if you're walking. And I go, I don't know where I am. And the woman who checked my century pass said, welcome to planet Earth. <laughs> okay? And I had such a shift. Oh, I couldn't believe it. It, it, it jolted me. Yes. It Real jolted cool. me because I thought, oh, my God, because maybe, you know, this is really the space station and by day or night. And right. you know, who knows what's going on interdimensionally. We just never know. Right. Planet Earth. Milky Way galaxy, Orion sector of the universe, you know, it goes on and on, right? <laughs> right. Where are we right now? That was Where are of, a, of awakening. Welcome. You're to here life. and all the good stuff is over here. Well, what's the good stuff? So do you have exciting plans that you personally take in for the holiday or something you want to wish all of your followers and friends on, out here? Well, use this time. It's a, it's a, it's a time of rebirth and, and renewal and reflection more than anything. Look back on 2016. What were some of the things you loved? What are some of the things you want to polish up and, and reflect on that. And then in that moment of reflection, hopefully in hope, you'll also be reflecting that out into the world as well. And try to find a quiet moment just to give birth to that Christ child within you, that, that Christ consciousness, that, that wonder star child that has come from elsewhere and is exploring this area. What, what message do you bring to everybody? What good tidings do you bring during this season? And then just share that. I love that. I love that. I like to say, if you're to be one of the chosen ones, choose back. This is a good time to choose that. So I have a personal uh, offer for you, actually, and also for our audience, but I'd uh -huh. love to have you and your wife on a, on a Skype tour of my art, of my studio. I'd love to have your feedback. I'd love to um, just share some of it with you, like current, how God's channeling this information nowadays. That's a great idea. Because I'm, I, I just think it'd be really fun. In fact, I'd even love to tape that. Maybe Neil would like to do that because I haven't been to these places. I've not been to Egypt. I've not been to India or to any of these temples. And I have people telling me that they've seen, when I go into vision states, I'll wake up and find myself in these places. And I've been told that some of them are real. So I'm going to put that out and anyone out there too can connect with me on this. I want to set this up with you. If you, I think it'd be a fun journey. I, I love it. Yeah, we, we do that actually quite a bit. We, because of the work that Claire and I do with, with the sacred art, we, we always have artists approaching us saying, gosh, I, I never knew what I was painting until I saw your show Arcanum or saw your guys, uh, I was at your event or whatever. And the other thing I love about that is not only being able to connect with artists who are like, you're just, you're channeling, you're a bridge between that unseen divine realm and, and, and this world. But also the highest compliment that, that we receive often about art is that people tell us, you know, growing up, I went to Catholic school, I went to Catholic church, and I was really afraid of a lot of that art. I was taught to be afraid of those images, those paintings, the stained glass, and they, and they come back and they say, wow, you've given that back to me. I can go back and now I understand what it means and I can connect with it. And I realize that there is this whole other mystical and spiritual dimension to the traditional upbringing I had that was always there, but I never saw it. Well, I didn't quite have that upbringing. And I was told at a very young age that I should be a bookkeeper. <laughs> I never expect to be an artist. I had uh -huh. and, and any creativity was like squished out of me. Yeah. And my dad would only send me to college to be an elementary school teacher. That's what I was allowed. So all of this is, is kind of interesting. Okay. So I understand you have a very interesting upcoming event with an interesting name, Shiny Happy People. Yeah. This is the way it came out for me. So I thought you'd share how you came with that name and what's gonna, what it is and what you're uh -huh. going to be talking about for everyone. Yeah, well, it's an event I'll be having here on Portal to Ascension, February 4th. And the title, most people have heard the REM song, Shiny Happy People. And it's basically, it's a commentary by REM 
the, the term shiny, happy people sounds really nice. And, and, and in fact, it, it is and can be, but it actually comes from Chinese propaganda. And what it means is that most people are going through their lives as fakes, as zombies. They're, they're told that all this material stuff out here, that shiny bling bling stuff is going to make you happy. And we become zombies chasing all of that. And we realize sooner or later that doesn't bring fulfillment. And now we're, we enter an area where basically everything's fake, not just our news, our food, our air, our clothes. Everything is becoming fake, shiny, happy, but it's not. And what we've got to do is get back to the real essence of being shiny and happy people. And then we can begin the, the process of real change. So what I'm going to be talking about is not just you know, pointing out what many people already know is the obvious in our world, but how we can go into, for example, how, we, how can we alter our government to make it more in alignment with light body principles? What are some food ideas that put us more in alignment or dietary ideas that put us more in alignment with the light body principles? How can we become true shiny, happy people rather than the zombies that the powers that be seem to want to make us become? Wow. Oh my God. I love that. that that's the true awakening. And it's so practical. So yeah. it takes ascension and in all of this work and it shows us how to incorporate that. So I really, really love it. Why don't you give us the date of this event and also your website so how people can find okay. you? Yeah. So Shiny Happy People will be on uh, Saturday, February the 4th. And Neil will be posting the time. Uh, my website, and that's Portal to Ascension, is Neil's website. My website is williamhenry.net. And I'll also have details about that as well. Perfect. And I know you're also going to be speaking at Conscious Life Expo, one of my yes. favorite places. So I hope I see you then. Look forward right, to that. I just love this. I want everyone to know that my up and coming webinar is going to be my second webinar with Neil. My first one, everyone could actually look at now. It's called Calling All Angels. And I thought it was fabulous myself. It has all my original art is up showing it anyway. So this is 2017. You have been called. Your spiritual unfoldment has, be, has begun. And I am calling all of us undercover angels that that you are being called. And if you hear that, if you open up to this, it could revolutionize your life and start to come out of the closet and live your best life. That's going to be on Saturday, January 14th. And again, it's on Portal to Ascension. And you can check my website out, joanofangels.com. It's a brand new website. And there's a portal down on the left to take you to all the fabulous art. And just like I've invited Sir William Henry to have a Skype tour, you are all invited to reach out to me. It's just fun to take people on a tour of my gallery. Anyway, a big shout out to Neil and Portal to Ascension. And William, this has been so much fun getting to know you. I feel Thank like you. we've had a chance to connect. I've heard so much about you. And it's a pleasure, my pleasure. I'm gonna hop on your webinar when it comes and I'm gonna reach out to follow up on all of this. So. To all of our audience, have a blessed ascending Christmas. We have like you've shared so many tools. And so happy holidays, happy season, happy ascension. We'll see you on the other side. Uh -huh. <laughs> Namaste, everybody. God bless you. Thank you.